Hope you've got your safety glasses on. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Steve Spangler, host of television's DIY Sci, and your science guy for the next couple minutes. Hey, I'm excited to be a part of the Cameo Book Fair, benefiting baby to baby. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, schools are closed across the nation, so many of them, and many children don't have access to the resources they really need to learn. That's where together we can make a difference. Every dollar raised during the Cameo Book Fair gonna help give a child the tools they need for a brighter future. So thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this. Now, know that during the next couple minutes, because I'm excited to share some science experiments you can actually do at home. While you're watching, you can click on the link below or you can go to cameo.com to make a donation or you can book a cameo from a person like me, a, a participating talent who uh, is helping to fund uh, and supporting our Baby to Baby Challenge So uh, as, we raise, as we raise money for this awareness. So please do that along the way. If you know anything about me and my cameos, uh, it's not just talking. I love to include a, some sort of science experiment in with the message that we send out. So I found a couple great science experiments that are a little bit longer than you'd normally do for a cameo. I'd love to show them to you, some things that you can do as, uh, as you're working on things uh, at home and some science experiments you can try at home. All right, take a look at this. Uh, oh, this is kind of a fun challenge. Look at this. Uh, you're going to need to have three cups. So you can see our three uh, red cups. Here's the challenge. It's a very, very simple challenge. You need to move this cup right here, this center cup right here. This cup needs to move from this glass into this glass. It doesn't seem like it's that hard. Oh, but I forgot to tell you, you can't do it. And you can't get a friend to do it. And you can't do this either. And you can't pour it in here. You have to somehow, you see where I'm going with this, somehow, magically, you need to get this cup to jump through the air, fly through the air, and land in this cup over here. Well, you can do it if you know something about the science. It's called Bernoulli's Principle. It says, fast moving air creates an area of low pressure, which ultimately means if you blow over the cup like this, there's less pressure now uh, exerting down on that cup. And believe it or not, the cup will lift up a little bit. Watch. See, it's there. Uh, so now you just have to time it and give it just enough of a of a that fast moving air to be able to land over into this cup. Here we go. Tip your waitress. I'll be here all week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Isn't that kind of fun? It's the cup challenge. Right now, you're watching this, going, "Hey, give me some cups. I need some cups. Go get some cups and participate." Oh, look at that fast moving air cream, low pressure. Take the cup challenge. I don't know, I could just do the next 15 minutes with the cup challenge, but that would be boring for you. But it's Bernoulli's principle. See, now here is the secret for me, is I try to find common household items that you can use to do that science experiment. Now when we say experiment, we really mean like a demonstration. All of these can be turned into an experiment. So if you really wanted to do some science and you were watching this, you wouldn't do it with just these cups. You would experiment with uh, styrofoam cups and you would experiment with uh, other kinds of plastic cups. See which ones work fairly well. I can tell you these solos seem to work fairly well for us, but that's uh, overall the challenge to be able to try. All right, let's head to the kitchen for our a little kitchen chemistry. Uh, I'm going to use some items that you would find in the kitchen. So here, here with our glass. So there is our little wine glass that you see there. You could use a, a couple different things if you wanted to. A glass like this would work, but uh, I want a little bit less liquid. So I think that that's going to be fine. So that's perfect. And to that, we're going to add just a little bit of water. That should be perfect. All right. And so we can see it, uh, food coloring to the rescue. So go ahead, pick a color. Go ahead, yell it out. Red, thank you very much. If you're wondering how I knew that, I just picked. So a lot of you yelled blue and you're like, how, why is he using red? All right, so here's our red here. And if one drop is good, you know what the rule is, 50 drops would be awesome. All right, so there you go. So here it is. And there is the red liquid. So what we're really going to look at here is the difference between two different liquids. So what's the uh, in terms of how they behave and everything. We know that oil and water don't mix. Those are nice opposites. So we're going to use a lot of this cooking oil that's here. Now use any brand that you want to of cooking oil. We're just using inexpensive vegetable oil. And so I'm going to add the vegetable oil to the water. All right, what's going to happen? Go ahead, predict, just yell it out there. What's going to happen? Look at this. Of course, the two separate along the way. The oil sits on the top and the water stays on the bottom. 
they're known to be immiscible liquids, right? So they don't mix. Even when you shake them up, this is a polar liquid, um, being a uh, water being polar, and the oil being nonpolar. So our polar liquid and our nonpolar, just meaning two immiscible liquids. All right, so this is kind of cool. It can kind of stay here like this. But what I really want to do is this. I'd like to be able to move this around inside. And so here is what we need to the rescue. It's right there. There it is, some Alka-Seltzer. Perfect. All right, so if you take Alka-Seltzer and you put Alka-Seltzer in water, that's kind of like uh, vinegar and baking soda, right? It's pretty much what these are anyway. It's sodium bicarbonate is your baking soda. Instead of vinegar, they're using citric acid. But when you add water, then the reaction takes place. So I'm just going to use one of the tablets here. I'll save the other one here for just a second. So watch what happens when we drop this down inside water. In fact, if I just were to try it with something like this, for example, if we were to just use a little bit of water here like this, and we drop some of the Alka-Seltzer in the water, this is what we get. There it is. There's our bubbling action that you see right there, producing bubbles of carbon dioxide. Well, we want to put those bubbles of carbon dioxide to good use. And so now when we drop the Alka-Seltzer down inside here, watch what happens. It only reacts with the uh, water, but look at this. It's like, oh, it's like a lava lamp. Would you look at this? Look at those little pieces up, come to the very top. The little bubbles will pop and they work their way back down again. Look at this. It is this bubbling blob, as we say, or a do-it-yourself lava lamp. Look at the little bubbles that will pick up the pieces. They'll pop at the top, and the little bubbles will drop back down again. So instead of taking a big piece like I did, take a little smaller piece and see if that does anything for you. See if those will make a little bit smaller little bubbles that are there as we drop them down inside. What an easy way to make, oh, there's one right there, an easy way to make a do-it-yourself lava lamp. And whenever you want it to go again, you simply add a little bit more carbon dioxide uh, in the form of an Alka-Seltzer and let that take off. Of course, it'll completely separate once again. That can go into a soda bottle. It becomes a shake-up soda bottle, which is kind of a cool thing to, uh, to play with as well. But a simple way to be able to doing it, reminding us that oil and mix and that carbon dioxide is our secret ingredient that's able to pick up those bubbles and send them to the top. I love those little tiny spheres after the massive eruption that just continue to work their way back down again. What a simple way to be able to do it. Okay, um, you remember those uh, cups that we were playing with before? Why don't we do something with those cups, with the three empty cups that you saw here as well? Those things that if you take a look down here like this, this is going to be position number one, position number two, and position number three. So when you start this with friends, you're just going to need to have three cups and a pitcher of water. So that's going to be perfect for us. Three cups and a pitcher of water. All right, so um, uh, you remember this thing? It it was the uh, shell game where the um, con art, uh, the uh, entertainer would put the pea on the, uh, on the table, then take three shells and cover the pea with one of the shells, move the shells around, and then you would put money down and bet where, and you know exactly where it is, but whenever you lift it up, it wasn't there, right? Well, this is a similar game, but of course you're going to be able to track it with pro no because I showed you the three empty cups, and the water goes into the cup. My hands are quicker than the eyes, so I'm going to move the cups around, and then I want you to yell out position one, two, or three, wherever you think it is. All right, you ready? Here we go. The camera will not cut away. Here we go. Move it around, move it around. Look at this, look at this, look at this, and there you go. Is the water in position one, position two, or position three? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Okay. A lot of you got it, and I get that, and it's just because you are watching very, very carefully. Again, if you're missing that a little bit, uh, position one, position two, and position three. All right, so it's right here in number two. Everybody look over there. Okay, now we're going to get started. So let's see if uh, they didn't catch that. All right, here we go. Look at this, look at this. A little, oh, would you look at that? Is it in position one, two, or three? Just go ahead, one, two, or three. Consensus, divide by two, distance to the moon. All right, most of you got it, is in position two. All right, so this time, now we play for money. Got it? Not here. Here we go, you ready? So now we move it around, here we go, like this, like this, and like this, and one more, position one, two, or three. Most of you are saying two, no, not in two, so not in two, so here, keep on going, now you know where it is. Now you know where it is, here we go, here we go, here we go, and where is it, one, two, or three? No, 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 not in those two. I told you where it was. So here, here, watch this very carefully. Where is it? One, two, or three. And of course, not there as well. And of course, the water is completely gone. Some of you are like, I've just been had. 
There's no possible, I saw him put the water in. Unless they cut away and there was a trick or something here, how in the world did uh, the water disappear? And the answer is because part of STEM and part of science communication, and communication is part of the storyline, it's part of the experience. I could have just shown you the secret early on and said, look at this stuff, it's kind of cool. But I built this whole story around the one, two, and three, and you were participating, you were involved, and I said that there's no water. There is water in the cups. It's just not in the same form that it was before. Look at this down here. No water, no water, and uh, oh, would you look at that? Look at where the water is. Look at this. There it is right there. Here is the water. It turned from a liquid into a solid because of a material called a superabsorbent polymer. A polymer. Now you might have heard the term polymer before. Whenever kids are making slime nowadays, they talk about polymers, these long chains of molecules, this slippery, slimy stuff. But you'll be amazed to find, see where I could find, or I can show you where to find this polymer. You could actually do this today and show this trick to somebody, fool somebody else with this, depending on who's in the house. And I'll show you why that's, uh, that's, uh, that's so. All right, so take a look at this. This is the material that I'm using right here, called water gel. And uh, I'll show you where to get the water gel, but it's actually a powder. So you can see the powder that's inside here. This time I'm going to use a clear cup. So look at the cup that's right here and the powder goes inside like this. Now it has the consistency of like flour or maybe NutraSweet or Sweet and Low, one of those things like that, but it's not. This is a super absorbent. That means that these little molecules here are gonna grab onto the water, absorb 500 to 800 times its weight in water. All right, uh, you can keep it right there and take a look. I won't move it. Ready, watch this. Three, two, one, it's done. Look at that. <sighs> That's instant. Look at the gel. It happened instantly. The water turns from a liquid to a solid like that. Now, it's actually a physical reaction, meaning that if you will let this sit out and let the water evaporate, that powder will come back, and you can do it again and again and again. Right now, you're saying, yeah, 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 but I don't have that green jar of that water gel. But you don't have to because that water, that super absorbent polymer, is found in something that you might have at home. Look at Dun, da, da, da. That's right, a baby's diaper. This is the super absorbent material that's in a baby's diaper. Now we've taken it out, so look at what I did. I opened it up like this and uh, I tore out the inside lining and I poured the inside lining. I put it on a piece of paper and I poured it out and I put it into this Ziploc bag. So this is the contents. Can you already start to see the powder there at the very bottom? Look at that. So we're actually extracting the super absorbent polymer. So you simply put it in there like this, you shake it around until you can get all of that powder down to the bottom. So what I like to do is poke a, or puff a little bit of air inside like this, maybe just a little bit more like that. Good. And so, so now watch, I'll hold it up here. Can you see the, uh, the fibers in the air? Listen to this, you can hear it. There it is. So now watch, my job is to extract the super absorbent polymer. There, look at that, there it is. Now, aside from being a really cool trick and aside from being a super absorbent for baby diapers, what do they need stuff like this for? Well, believe it or not, they found out that if you take this kind of material and they fine tuned it uh, so that you could put it into the soil, for example, and then plant plants, plant crops, plant grass. And now water that would normally go down into the soil much farther than the roots could use is held up by those roots. Non-toxic, environmentally safe. The roots can reach down, pull the water back out again, reduce watering sometimes by 50 to 80%. So that's the real use. So if you head to the garden store, you'll find some different super absorbent crystals. If you played with Orbeez or any of those jelly marbles or the toys the kids are playing with, any of those growing creatures, they all start as one of these super absorbent polymers. So I ruined it for you. The very next time you see a baby diaper, there's, there's no possible way that you're not going to sit there and think, wait, wait, just a good super absorbent polymer. And if you're looking to do the trick and to just freak somebody out, you don't have to do the three cup Monty. Remember, I used about a teaspoon. So that's about a teaspoon and about half of this. So is this 12 ounces or 16 ounces? I think this is 12. So probably six or eight ounces. And I'm just using tap water 
And you remember at the beginning here, I told you that they were empty cups. I just didn't, the polymer was in this cup right there. So I simply did this, I said, some, and then I was clumsy purposefully, and I went, oh, I'm sorry, to show you it was an empty cup. And so it looked like I'd shown you that they were empty cups, but I didn't show you every single one was empty, so don't worry about it. But if you want to just have some fun, try this. You simply have the cup and you say, come over here and trust me. And so you pour it in and you say, now I just want to hold this over your head. Just stay there. Three, two, one, and done. <laughs> is that crazy? It looks like the water has vanished. What a fun way to be able to introduce somebody to the chemistry of superabsorbent polymers and a baby diaper. All right, you remember, if you're watching this, you can go down and you can click on the link in the description. You can go to Cameo.com and support Baby to Baby. With schools closed around the country, we need your help in getting the resources and supplies to kids who need it the most. And so that's why I'm so excited about being a part of this virtual book fair. You can book a talent like me. I'm supporting the Baby to Baby. And so if you do that with a Cameo, you know that my Cameos are not just standing in front of a white wall and saying happy birthday. I love incorporating some cool science experiment with that birthday message or a goodwill or a good wishes message. Maybe you have a friend who's a teacher who's heading back into school. We need to support them now more than ever. And so I'd love to be able to provide a special uh, message to one of those teachers who's working really, really hard right now and uh, give them a little encouragement as well. I have one more experiment for you that I think you're going to enjoy. Here, take a look at this. It's time to set this whole thing up. You're going to need a glass of water. And uh, how about our pitcher right here? So we're going to need our, our water like this, looking good. And I'm going to reach back here and grab just a little bit more water. Because here's what you need to do. It's a physics experiment. Oh, if you're wondering, no, no, this isn't my kitchen. We're actually on set of our television show, DIY Sci. So if you haven't checked it out, it's on Fox. Uh, and you'll find it on the weekends all over the country. So it's called DIY Sci. So we're on the set right now of, uh, of the show. Uh, take a look. Here is the water. And what else are we going to need? You've got to look at that. We're going to need some eggs as well. So pick an egg. And the object is to get the egg into the glass of water. Now, you know I'm not going to let you just drop the egg into the glass of water. There has to be some sort of challenge, right? So I think I've got a way to maybe help with that. And that is, uh, how about this? How about a pie pan? So if the pie pan goes here like this, and then we put the egg here like this, the question is, kind of like the glass that we did at the beginning, how do you get the egg into the glass of water, but you're not allowed to touch the egg, you're not allowed to touch the glass of water, you can't hang on to the pan, i got to move all this stuff out of the way, because I have a feeling there's going to be a mess here in just a second. Well, the answer is something to do with uh, force and motion. I'm going to try to hit the pan out of the way, and if I could hit the pan out of the way like this, I just want to see if I can get the egg in here. The only way I can think to do that is to use one of these little tubes that you see here from a, pee, a roll of toilet paper. So is it better if I pull it back here so you can see? Is that a little bit better? Good. And so now the egg sits on top like this, and now you're set up and you're ready to go. All right? See if that other camera can give you kind of a top down to see what the whole setup looks like a little bit. I think, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it in here as well. All right, so here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to hit the pan out of the way, the force of that pan moving will hit the tube, and then all of a sudden the, uh, the egg kind of falls in. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, and... And the crowd goes wild. The cr I know what you're thinking, though. If you've seen me do anything, whether it's The Ellen Show or on television with DIY Cy si or the uh, over 1,800 YouTube videos, you know what I always say. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. The other thing I always say is don't try this at home. Try it at a friend's home because why miss? So here's what we need. Three glasses of water. That's why I had to go get some more water. Thank you so much for being a part of this event and for donating and supporting our Baby to Baby Challenge here with our Cameo Book Fair. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to set these up like this because I'm going to need to be able to, I think, hit this way. The pan's not going to work, so that's why McDonald's is giving these away. No, no, no. Hang on here like this. Good. And now we got to put the little tubes in place. Part of this effort that I support so much is that people setting up other people for success. And I chose this demonstration because we're just trying to set everything up for success here and hoping that it works. Ah, all right, here we go. Here, part of it is the, uh, the hard work and the effort put into the very beginning. Here we go. First one, second one, and the third one right here. All right, thank you so much for supporting everything. 
It's one fell swoop through. Here we go. Three, two, one. And the crowd goes wild. That in and of itself is worth the donation. Fair enough. Click on the link. Go to Cameo.com. Be a part of this. Help support Baby to Baby as we get those necessary resources in the hands of kids. I'm Steve Spangler. Thanks so much for having fun. And thanks so much for participating in the Cameo Book Fair.